came to uh, you know like stumbled upon glass and decided to work on it how did how did you begin that how so, was it i stumbled is the actually the operative word mm -hmm. um when i finished my international business degree um and was you know as one is at, uh, mm -hmm. after your studies at a loose end yeah. i was assisting my mum in her stained glass practice mm -hmm. and we noticed that there was uh, a gap in first of all uh, availability of flat glass for her craft the stuff that she was importing was um, breaking a lot on the way mm. and it's really expensive and so we wondered if maybe we could make some of our own flat glass and then second was um, glass making as a craft in Kenya and East Africa as a whole it's, it's very craft oriented here there's a lot of carving and bone work and metal work and bead work and you know hand work leather work but glass wasn't there so it seemed to me that there was a, a gap there so i decided to explore um your story of creating Kitengela glass is quite incredible um i mean starting from scratch i'm interested in knowing how you chose the location um, where you currently do your work and and how was it working then in that place was it like a jungle how have you transformed the, the place literally you know it, well, we we didn't choose there to work we lived there already oh, right. and so um, our work evolved in the place that we, we lived in. Um, it's become rather urbanized now. Uh, okay, the road's still not great, and it's still some people would consider bush, but um, when we moved there, there was nothing. I mean, there was literally one Maasai family who sold us the land, and that was it, and a, and a few antelopes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I've checked the list of clans you work with. You work with some of the biggest clans. We're talking about Richard Branson, we're talking about um, Sarova, you know, and how did you manage to get such a huge clientele portfolio you know under your belt is it could be the work you're doing is excellent that people just look for you well i would hope so um, <laughs> <laughs> um mainly through through word of mouth um we don't advertise ourselves a huge amount with the advent of social media i've been doing a lot more mm. kind of self-promotion but um we we're kind of unique in what we do mm. um we are very um individual in our approach to what people need or what we I perceive that people need mm -hmm. trying to do the best thing the right thing and and continual improvement um, to somebody who has never gone to Kitengela glass um, I've been there myself and I think it's interesting would you can take us through the process of you know recycling glass how you where do you get them from actually so in a nutshell we recycle so from bottle glass or window glass so there's a nice big building industry in Kenya because we're developing um, when you cut a window pane for your stock window the piece that's left over invariably gets thrown away because it's cheaper to discard it than, um, than save it scrap glass doesn't really have much of a value um, we collect that through various means get it to our studio we have a furnace there which holds about 250 kilos of glass and that it runs at 1100 centigrade. Um, in the evening we will load that with scrap glass but with a shovel. Overnight that melts and boils all the bubbles out and in the morning we have a nice big pool of hot glass ready to work. When we work in the course of the day we dip our rods like picking up honey on a spoon and pull out the glass and blow it or shape it or cast it or do whatever whatever we need to do um, until we either run out of glass or space in the cooling oven so once you make an object it goes into another oven that's for gradual cooling or we run out of time to make things then we reload the furnace um, the cooling oven is closed for a very kind of gradual drop this is critical in glass making by the way if you cool a piece too quickly then the outside shrinks faster than the inside and the piece will shatter and yeah Bob's your uncle it's a very um, old craft we've had to kind of develop a, a slightly signature style because the material the recycled glass isn't really designed for handwork it's uh, it's it's it, cools over a very short temperature range and so we've got to be a little bit kind of faster and more accepting of um, what would be regarded as maybe imperfections so variations in thickness or bubbles or striations that we regard as the mark of our material and actually it gives our stuff a unique kind of flavor um plus <clears throat> it's, it's quite an impressive you know like in terms of 
environmental conservation. Um, could it be that maybe your father kind of inspired you, knowing him as a person who is very renowned in the field of conservation? So my parents were kind of typical hippies. Yeah. Um, my, my dad's an ethologist and so very much into conservation and wildlife and my mum is an artist. Um, and, and I guess I'm a sort of marriage of that. Yeah. Um, where we live next to the park, it's a, it, it's a very kind of eco-sensitive um, area. Yeah. Um, we've always had animals growing up. Um, I've always been exposed to a lot of artwork. Yeah. The, the fact that our sort of eco-friendly ethos at Kitangela Hot Glass is, is more a result of pragmatism and necessity than the need to be eco-fashionable. Right. <laughs> actually, it's, it's not fashionable to do anything Very eco, right? Incredible. Now, yeah. Well, because, but actually it's just a no-brainer. It just yeah. makes sense. It's, it's cheaper to melt glass that already exists yeah. because you don't have to take it up to such a high temperature yeah. than to make scrap gla uh, uh, fresh glass from sand and soda ash. Yeah. Um, we also, you know, I mean, we're, we're Kenyan, so yeah. we, we, we love to reuse things. It, it, mm. it just makes sense. All right. And so that, that was part of when we started, because we were starting on a shoestring, um, we were looking for existing materials and existing fuels. And of course, all, all my packing materials are scrap paper. Um, I use used engine oil yeah. to burn, to melt the glass, the scrap glass itself. Quite a lot of my furnace materials I've scavenged from around the world. Oh. So. Um, in another life, what would you be doing right now if you were to choose a whole new career, a whole new life? What would be? Your I'd career? probably be an astronaut. <laughs> why? Why are you not an astronaut? Now? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> or uh, Kitangela hot glass happened? <laughs> it did. It's, it did just sort of happen, actually. I, did, I certainly didn't think that 30 years ago, that 30 years from then, I would still be doing the same thing. <laughs> All right. And, and so, how long have you been doing it, honestly, baby? About 28 years or so. You're not yet tired of it. No, there's always something new. Right. There's, a, there's always something right. different. You, you come on like a very handsome guy. Is, is that something that you do partly because of your craft and you know, perfection and being a, a specialist in that field? Or that's your personality? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be my personality. Actually, I would consider myself to... I'm, I'm being driven away from my craft by, by sitting behind a computer, by dealing with clients, which, is, which I love to do. But at the same time, I don't actually get to do what I started, which was blow glass. Yeah. In fact, that's kind of the direction I'm going back into. Mm. So when people ask me, you know, what are your plans for expansion is a normal question I get. Yeah. Is actually I don't have expansion plans. I have improvement plans right. and I have plans to get back to my craft. Oh, your craft. Yeah. All right. Um, entrepreneurship has made look sexy, but it's certainly not. What are, what are some of the lessons you've learned in your journey? In, in terms of building Kitangela hot glass? I, in fact, I got asked this question, and so I'm, I have a good answer ready for you <laughs> uh, a couple of days ago. Um, rather than sort of the, the, the pat things, yes, actually, first of all, the thing is do, do what you love. That's a kind of obvious cliche that, uh, that, that, that but it, it's true. Yeah. That's why it's a cliche. Um, second is, for me, um, my, my thing was perhaps not to have too much of the end in sight. Yes, it's good to have your goal and a vision of, of what it's going to look like, but don't dwell on that too much because the day-to-day -day journey of getting to somewhere that might be something rather fantastical could be rather intimidating. So it's just basically plug away at it every day, doing what you love, and eventually suddenly you'll be there. <laughs> um, any major setback you've gone through in your entrepreneurship journey in terms of business? None other than the usual kind of day-to-day -day challenges that are actually all learning opportunities.